What's up YouTube? Today is a good day. We are going from C4 standard brakes to some Monster C5 brakes. Step one, jack up the car, put it on the jack stands. Next, remove the wheel. As an aside, the stock saw blade uh, wheels will not work with this kit because they the innards run into the face of the caliper. You know, I don't know who's following along on this channel, but I just took my car to the first track day, to my first track day, and kind of cooked up these calipers when I was inspecting them. I broke off the little C-clip, circlip, off the pin here because it was so brittle even though it was brand new. So anyway, let's get in there. To remove the caliper, you take off the C-clip, pull out the pin, rock out the bottom, It's always a battle, isn't it? Oh, there we go. Caliper removed. So for now, I'm going to set it up top on the upper control arm. Trying not to bind up my braided uh, brake lines. So now to get the caliper racket off of it, I use a 13 16 socket which is like an awkwardly too perfect fit, but I'm pretty sure it's a 21 millimeter. And these are torqued on really tight. Uh, I broke it loose. Let's make sure we're going the right way. Lefty righty, tighty, loosey. Goosey? What? Eh. Okay. I wish I had a 21 mil socket. <laughs> That's going to help a little bit. If I turn the wheel, how about that? Rack it off. So I'm going to save the hardware. I think I need to use it for the new adapter kit. With bracket off, rotor comes right off. It's pretty much a new rotor. I'm not really sure what the deposits are on there. Probably from really, really high temperatures at the track. Let's set that guy aside, save that for later. There's the hub. And we're gonna go get our kit, and uh, or I'll probably remove the caliper next. I think. All right. So what I've done is loosely reattach the caliper brackets, put the caliper in, less the pin. It seems it'll probably be rigid enough to do that. I got. I know a half inch is way too much, but an 11 millimeter. On a little tiny breaker bar, break it loose. I got my guy ready, and it's already dripping. Awesome. Hey. I 
Should have brought like a drain pan over here. So there's a copper washer inside and on both sides of the banjo bolt. The washer did stay on the back of the old caliper so you want to make sure that you don't leave that guy behind. Oh what a mess. My gloves ripped. I'm just going to have to go get a drip pan because I don't want it to make a mess. Okay, let's try to get this back way on there. Not a lot of room to work and the natural curvature of the brake hose is making this difficult, but I think I got it started. <clears throat> a little ratcheting wrench to make this job a little easier just to get it going. Alright, at least it's tight on there. I'll have to deter to orient the hose. Um, I think I'm going to orient it just upwards, uh, and that's difficult because it, when you tighten it, it wants to rotate forward, and it's all slick with brake fluid. come back and put like a final torque on that bad boy. Oh, shit. Brake pad doesn't need to be in there right now. All right. Made a nice mess, but not too bad. Nothing old. Cleaning won't fix. Some brake fluid later. <coughs> Another top tip, it looks like it looks like there's an L on the back of this caliper indicating left side, which would be the side we're working on. So yeah, I'm gonna stick this bad boy up here for the time being. Balances pretty nicely right there. And we'll take off the caliper, which is going to be full of fluid. And yeah, uh, not too much fluid. One of the reasons you might want to consider a little brake upgrade or brake refresh is I uh, at the track I cooked that brake caliper boot. It's still sealed, like it's not pushing fluid out. Obviously, that's something that if I wasn't upgrading, I would fix with this to rebuild kit. And these are pretty much new ish Hawk, uh, what do they call them? 5.0 uh, performance street pads or whatever. As far as I know, they're okay, but the caliper would need to be addressed. Okay, so you'll notice, at least on this kit, there's a set of double washers on the Allen ones and the way this works is 
these are they stick out and the place where it says LH or left hand it faces inboard and these little circular cutouts fit into the circular cutout here like that essentially there's no wrong way to install it because you have this is threaded inside these are not and that's because the caliper itself is threaded so you just it just helps to see so the way this will go is this will go in I'm gonna put those bolts through the backside and the reason those two washers are there is so that the bolt isn't sticking out from back here because it would make contact with the rotor which is much thicker than the standard rotors Whoop. So I'm going to mount up the camera and we'll get to it. So see how when I get it tight, it's flush with the bracket. Whoops. Keep that one close. Alright. For torque, I'm going to go with the factory torque of the normal caliper bracket, which I think is it's pretty high, it's like 100 something. I'm gonna go look it up and then I'll get situated for the next step. All right, so I found a couple of specs in the manual. What I'm using here is a 12 millimeter, uh, holy shit, Allen wrench for my new hardware. Turns out there is new hardware, it comes with uh, lock nuts. Holy shit, lock washers. And yeah, so, oh, I need to go get the rotor. But um, yeah, so the torque on this is 166 foot pounds, plus or minus 15 foot pounds. So I don't even think my torque wrenches go that high. Mine maxed out at 150 foot pounds because I got it at Tools for Fools, aka Harbor Freight. <clears throat> so we'll do it to 150 <clears throat> while we have easy access. Hey yo. Um, I guess 150 falls within that plus or minus range, almost, I guess. 166 minus 15 is only 151, but. We'll make do with what we can do. So I mean, I gotta move the camera. I'm gonna get access in here. That's too awkward to try to tighten like this. That's tight. So what I did right there, I just tightened it to the click and then went a little bit more. That should give me ballpark, the torque spec I need. I wanted to take a second to check out the difference in the size of these rotors. That's the new one, and that's the old front. Of course I can't get it in focus, there we go. What a big difference. I know I can't be the only guy around here that likes them thick. Ayo! So, if your hubs are really rusted up and gross, do your best to grind as much or sand away that stuff so that we get a nice flat mounting surface. Ow, that fucking hurt. And if your cars is like anything like mine, it will your caliper will jump off the ledge because it's so excited to get mounted. So I'm gonna stick in some bitch. This second pad. Wait a second. A 
little spring got stuck in there. Alrighty, and so it looks like the way it will line up is like that. Bolts. Well, hard to see. started. And then, oh, there we go. Easier with the tool. As an aside, these rotors are kind of cool. They don't have all the oil on them. Normals, normal rotors come with because they're geomet coated, I guess. So that's neat. So mounts the calipers to the adapters. On the back side, it's important to make sure your brake hose isn't kinked or isn't distressed in any way based on how you mounted it. Uh, coming together, that's pretty much it, actually. Other than I need to bleed the brakes now. because the pistons are retracted into the caliper once you push the brakes or bleed the brakes and then push the brakes they'll sandwich it up and then when the wheel is mounted obviously it'll, it'll be good for it. took the new brakes out on a quick test drive and I have to say they made a really big difference in terms of just bite in general. Um, there's no way I'm going to be able to check uh, how much more or less brake fade they have on the street. Or probably not until like the next track day but pretty solid improvement. Um, one thing I noticed when I took them out, because I was trying to like burnish them in as safe as I could on the street for 2 o'clock on a Friday, and I noticed I have a ton of squeaking, what I think is coming from the rear, but it's hard to tell when you're inside the car. Um, so, they shouldn't be squeaking, they're carbon ceramic, no there's ceramic rears and those are supposed to be the least squeaky of any variant you can get in terms of semi-metallic or um, you know track pads, track pads being the squeakiest and ceramics being the quietest for street use, street temperatures. So I'm sure I need to pull those apart and just give them a once over and make sure they're all greased up and squared away. But yeah, long story short, C5 brakes on the C4 that didn't have the, it's like J55 brake upgrade kit, they're uh, worth the money. So we'll see how they perform on the track. Peace.